Look at here with another possum preview for the next episode of the Friday Zone. And I found out I have asthma. You have to answer math questions to do your spell. <laughs> B, I've got a real head scratcher today. You know I can solve it, Sammy. So check out the next episode of the Friday Zone. Right now. Production support for the Friday Zone is brought to you by the WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. The IU School of Education, dedicated to improving, teaching, and learning in a diverse and rapidly changing world. More at education.indiana.edu. Smithville Fiber, the Gigacity Company, a philanthropic community partner since 1922, and proud supporter of numerous community organizations. More information at smithville.com. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our communities. And these Indiana public television stations, thank you. Hey, Ethan, what you got there? Uh, well, Cassia, this is a book about reading people's minds. Okay, no, it isn't dumb. It's actually very informative. So, yeah. The week is done and it's time for fun. There's room for everyone. Welcome to the Friday Zone, everyone. I'm Cassia. And I'm Ethan. Time to get your head in the game, Cass. Yep. The Wonder Lab Children's Museum will be here later to talk about air pressure. We visit a local classroom, and Sammy Sly's got a hairy situation. But first, imagination runs wild with, with a song, song on, on the, the Friday, Friday Zone playlist. playlist. Tell me who's the monster. Sir, tell me where you're hiding out. Are you somewhere in my house? Are you big and extra hairy, yellow-eyed and scary? Do you drool from stinky jaws with pointy teeth and sharpened claws? And do you growl or grunt or roar just because? Tell me who's the monster.
I am so happy you are here today. Do you know why? 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 Well, I just got back from the doctor, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and I found out I have asthma. <clears throat> oh no! Yes, and 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 I was hoping that maybe you could help me learn what to do about my asthma. <clears throat> yeah, of course. Of course, we will teach you how to use the inhaler correctly today with the spacer. Oh, yes. what? Wait, Jenny, what is an inhaler? So inhaler is this. It's a medication that you take, and uh, it helps you to breathe better mm -hmm. when you have a hard time to breathe. Oh, so yes. so when the doctor says Felix has asthma, it means he has a hard time catching his breath. Exactly. Yes. yes. Oh, and and what you're saying is the inhaler will yes. help me catch my breath. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is the medication, and this is the spacer that's uh, surround the medication, but uh, deliver it better in your lungs. Oh, mm -hmm. so wait, wait, Jenny, Mark, will you show me how to use the yeah, inhaler of and the spacer? So what you yes. want to do first is you want to grab your inhaler. Okay. You want to shake it for three seconds. Okay. So you're going to shake it really good to make sure all the medication's in there. Yeah. You're going to take off this cap. Okay. Take this cap off. Okay. And you're going to put the inhaler into the spacer. Oh. And what you want to do is prime it, which means you want to click it once just to make sure that it works. Oh, did you hear that noise? Yeah, it makes a cool whooshing sound. Whoosh! Whoosh! Wow. <laughs> and so what you want to do is you want to practice your breathing. You want to take three deep breaths in and out. Okay. And on the That's, third yes. time, the third time inhaling, you want to put your lips to the mouthpiece and you want to click this button and suck in all of the medication. Okay. Breathe in. Okay. Can and we, can we do that? Yeah, of course. Yes. Okay. Ready? All right. One, two, and put it in your mouth. Hold and it for 10 seconds. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <sighs> and what you want to do is if you're having an asthma attack and you need your inhaler, you want to do this twice. So you okay. want to wait one minute before doing it the second time, okay? Oh, mm -hmm. so uh -huh. wait, I have a question. Yes. Can, can Felix loves to play at the park and, and play sports and run around. Now that I have asthma and it's hard to breathe, can I still play? Yeah, of course. If you do the right management and take your medication on time, mm -hmm. yes, definitely you can play. Oh. Just be careful to stay away from the thing that you're allergic to, something mm -hmm. like that. Oh, so as long as I keep my inhaler handy, I can play all day. Exactly. Oh, that is such good news. Asthma's not so bad. No, not at all. all. I think it's actually been a minute. So do you want to try to do it one more time? Yes. Okay. Oh, let's do it one more time. Okay. okay? Alright. So what you want to do is uncap everything. Uncap it? Okay. Shake it. Shake, 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 shake. 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 Connect it. Connect it. Do our deep breathing. One. One. Two. two three. three. Hold it for ten seconds. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> good. Oh, Perfect. Yes. I, I, my lungs feel so good and strong. Thank you, Mark. You're Thank you, so Jenny. Welcome. Now we Thank can play you. all day long. <laughs> Here we are with Jude with another musical craft. Here's what you'll need. One or two paper plates, dried beans, a stapler, and markers. Put a handful or two of dried beans in a paper plate. Staple another paper plate securely on top of it. Decorate the maraca with markers. You now have an awesome maraca that you can use to make music. Thanks, Jude. We're getting set for some fun science. So come on back after this Friday, Friday Zone, Zone Field Trip. trip. Hey guys, it's Olivia here at Fairview Elementary School. We're here to visit Mr. Duncan's second grade class. Let's go. This is the math station. I think it's called the math station because sometimes we use to do it with math, but you can really make things out of it. Like you have like this can be a ten, and then you can like 
Um, and two, and then that one be 12. The shapes and patterns, because this is a hexagon. We don't usually use a this square. to do that. We usually use this to do a trapezoid. A trapezoid and a triangle. We usually and use a rhombus, stuff. but it's really called a diamond. You can make anything, imagine like a snowman, or a bunny rabbit, or a flower. You can make anything you want. These are the geo boards, and you can you really can make get like shapes and all that. Out, and then you bands. use these rubber bands and connect them. We'll have to make a triangle. I made a triangle. My name is Kyle L, and this is a writing station. I really like writing because it helps me get my handwriting neater, and I can write more things. I'm writing a lot of sentences about my mom. I love my mom so much because she is nice to me and I am you know, nice to her and I love her so much. Yeah. When you first want to start writing a story, you usually have to think about it first before you write it, then you write it and if you don't like the story, that's why you do a rough draft. If you don't like the story, you can do another story. Um, this is my favorite space in the classroom because um, like you get to read books and reading books is fun to me. And just pillows. Yeah. <laughs> She's reading Salt in his shoes. It's about and I'm reading, Jordan. And I'm reading Ninja. 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 In kindergarten, I I was like really trying really hard, and then I got better in first grade, and now I'm in second grade. We read books and then we write about it, so it'll help our memory too. You can have math and um, reading games on here and it will teach you reading and math. Whenever it says click on the shape, you have to click on the shape. Which is a square. And then you do that. This is Prodigy and it's a math game. When I was in kindergarten, math was a lot harder than it is now. Uh, this is a wizard battle. That's my enemy. You have to answer math questions to do your spell. And I can switch all my people. And you can level up. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Friday Zone. Today we're here with Nick from Wonder Lab. Nick, what are we gonna be doing today? Today, we're gonna be talking about air and the atmosphere. Very cool, very cool. What do you have to tell us about that? So, who here has heard of the atmosphere? Me! Yeah, okay. So the atmosphere, if everyone takes a deep breath in. What you're breathing is air from our atmosphere. So the atmosphere starts on the ground and it goes all the way up into the space. It's all of the gas around Earth. Okay? And all that gas, it can get really heavy, so all that gas has weight, and it's constantly pushing down on everything. And that's the reason that something like a balloon stays the same size. So what we have here is called a bell jar. Very cool. And so our bell jar. A bell jar? Our bell jar. <laughs> <laughs> so our bell jar works with our vacuum pump here, and it takes away some of that air, some of that weight that's pushing down on us mm -hmm. and on something like a balloon. So what happens when you take air away from the air in the jar? So what, let's take a hypothesis from our group. So what do you think happens when we take the air that's pushing down on something away? Yeah. Um, I think it, um, it goes down, maybe? So you think the balloon will go down or get smaller? Yeah, it will get smaller than fall down. All right, well let's see, let's test it. Let's, let's do it. So we can take our vacuum jar, our bell jar off of our plate. And then, let's see, could you put this right there on our plate? Oh, cool. oh no! <laughs> right, there we go. Perfect. Great, and then we'll go ahead. So put it right under our vacuum jar, and then what I need you to do is go ahead, and can you press that button and turn our vacuum jar on? Oh, so now it's taking away some of that air. It's 
That was super cool. Yeah. So what happened? That was cool. Was remember that air is really heavy. It's pushing down on the balloon. But when we take some of that air away in our vacuum, then that balloon can grow and expand and push outwards. That's so so interesting. Yeah. And something else we can do it with is how many of you have heard of shaving cream before? Me. Yeah, that's why it's in the bathtub. Yeah. So shaving cream is a bunch of itty bitty tiny bubbles. So our balloon is like one giant bubble. Our shaving cream is like a bunch of itty bitty tiny bubbles. So I'll give you both these cups. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some of our shaving cream with those itty bitty tiny bubbles into our cup. There we go. All right, and then I'll add a little bit into this cup. And so these itty bitty tiny bubbles are just like itty bitty tiny balloons. So we can take another hypothesis. What do you think will happen if we put shaving cream it into will. our bell jar? Mm. Let's see. Yeah. What do you think, Ben? It would expand. It'll expand, it'll grow. All right, well, we can find out. But to make it easier to see, we can also add a little bit of our paint here. Paint? So add a little bit of our paint. So now they mix it up? Yep, so go ahead and mix it up. Mix it up. And it'll give it a little bit more color so it's a little bit easy to see. That looks great. All right, so now we can open our jar back up, and I can take your cups. And we're gonna put them back on our vacuum plate. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. On the count of three, let's turn it on again. Are you ready? One, two, three. And so those itty bitty tiny Keep bubbles, when that air's not pushing down on them anymore, that's so cool. They grow and expand. So right now we have less air in this vacuum jar, less air pushing down on it. But we can see what happens when we let some of that air back in and it starts to push down on it again. All right, so what I need you to do is go ahead and spin this and open this just a little bit. And that's gonna add the air back into our jar. Oh look. Oh my god. Yeah, and so what's happening? It's like going down. It's yeah, it's going back down. The air is going back into the chamber and it's pushing back down on those itty bitty bubbles. <laughs> vacuum seal. <laughs> can I see it again? Yeah, so we can actually do it one more time with this one. Can you like make it all the way go up? And then oh, watch it yeah. Oh, you want to see how far it can go up? Yeah. 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 All right. So let's try it one more time. So we'll close this. All right, are you ready? We'll do the same thing. We'll count to three. And then we'll turn on our vacuum. Okay. Three, two, one. Let's see. We can see how much it grows. So it's growing, it's growing, it's growing. Those little bubbles are pushing out, expanding because that air is not pushing down on them anymore. So they can grow and grow and grow and make our shaving cream come out of our cup. <laughs> and that's about as big as it can get. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and put two cups in there at the same time. Yeah. So what do you think will happen if we let the air back in? Oh, what do you think? I think it'll go down. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> it'll shrink back down and go whoop. All right, That's a very so we guess. can see. So go ahead and turn that valve right there, okay. and it'll open it up so it can take it all the way off. And that'll let the air back into our jar. Oh. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We gotta start to look. Yep, go ahead and keep turning it back. Yep, it's keep turning it. Like yep. Olaf. It's Olaf. <laughs> it's melting like Olaf. Kind of like a snowman. <laughs> well, that was super cool. Thank you for showing us some uh, uh, air and how molecules work. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, that was great. Sorry, I, I didn't do anything wrong. 
But sometimes you have to apologize even when you aren't wrong, especially if you hurt a friend's feelings. So I'm sorry, Zarg. I didn't mean to upset you. Well, you did. Zarg, whether you realize it or not, the dust bunnies are your friends. They need you, like I need you and you need them. They are your friends. Are not. I am sorry, and so are they. They'll come around. You're just trying to sweet talk, Zarg. Well, maybe just a little. <laughs> well, it's not going to work. Fine. You stay in there, and I will read to you anyway. Dreamland by Edgar... <laughs> e oh, oh. <laughs> by E-A-P. By a route obscure and lonely, haunted by ill angels only, where an idol named Night on a black throne reigns upright. I have reached these lands but newly from an ultimate dim duel, from a wild climb that lies sublime, out of space, out of time. Out of space and time? Yes, Sark. Poe is talking about how there is no time in dreams and you may be in any place or any time in an instant. Oh, he was so smart. Mm. Mm. Bottomless veils and boundless floods and chasms and caves and titan woods with forms that no man can discover for the tears that drip all over mountains toppling evermore into seas without a shore. Seas that restlessly aspire, surging into skies of fire. Lakes that endlessly outspread their lone waters, lone and dead. Their still waters, still and chilly, with the snows of the lolling lily. I'm sorry, Zarg. Zarg is sorry, too. Look, Zarg, the dust bunnies are sorry as well. Uh, they should be sorry. Zark, be nice. He didn't mean it. He's just grumpy at times. Uh, I'm not. I apologize to you even when I didn't do anything. Now why don't you try apologizing to the dust bunnies? Zark does not apologize. Go on. <sighs> For me. I'm sorry. There. Now we are all friends again. B, I've got a real head scratcher today. You know I can solve it, Sammy. Mrs. Phillips' window was smashed and the only piece of evidence was this single strand of hair. How are we supposed to figure this out? This is an easy one, Sammy. We'll analyze the hair. Do you have samples from the suspects? Yes, I do. But how will, we, how will we analyze them? They're all so small. Well, look here. We can use a microscope to look closely at the hair. Oh, OK, I, I got it. But how do we set up the microscope? We'll take the little glass slide and place each hair on one. Then we'll insert the slide into the microscope, turn on the light, and take a picture. Okay. And the next one. And here's the second one. And the next one. Look at this, Sammy. See how different they are? Yes, I, I see. And look, two of them match. Yes, uh, suspect number one, lot of bad. Thanks, B. I'll go bring her in. Thanks to you all for helping us solve the case. See you next time. I wonder if Lot of Bad is her real name. Hello, everyone. I'm an antelope. That's spelled A-N-T-E-L-O-P-E. -E. This show usually starts with a joke, so here's one. How come antelopes don't get married? Because we can't elope. Uh, uh, mm -mm. I blame the writer. Today on All About Animals, we're going to talk about me, antelopes. <laughs> Hi, Antelope. My name is John. I have so many questions to ask you. Where do you live? We antelopes live in Asia, Africa, the Middle East, and North America. What do you like to eat? 
I like to eat pizza. Mm. Do you like to eat pizza? Mm. We antelopes are herbivores, so we don't eat pizza. Herbivores eat leaves and plants. But my favorite food is grass. Do you know that some antelopes follow zebras around because the zebras eat all the tough grass? We antelopes prefer the tender grass. Do zebras eat pizza? Mm. No, zebras and antelopes don't eat pizza. Mm. What about grass mm. pizza? No, no grass pizza for mm. us. Somebody told me that antelopes are related to cows. Is that true? Yes, that's true. Cows and antelopes are bovines. We are also related to goats and sheep. Do goats eat pizza? I don't know. But goats eat everything. Well, that's true. I'm an antelope, and thanks for watching All About Animals. Hey, Ethan, I got an air pressure challenge for you. What's that, Cass? How do you pick up that card without your hands? I got this. Here, I'll show you how it's done. If you take your straw mm -hmm. and you place it flat on the card okay. and suck through the straw, it creates a vacuum where there's low air pressure inside and high pressure underneath. And if you let go, it's gone. Oh. Well, that was really cool. Thank you for teaching me that, Cass. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on the Friday Zone. Remember to visit our website, fridayzone.org, to watch past episodes, play games, and see behind-the-scenes photos. And remember to live, learn, and play the, the Friday, Friday Zone, Zone way. way. Support for the Friday Zone is brought to you by the WTIU Children's Programming Endowment. Ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. The IU School of Education, dedicated to improving, teaching, and learning in a diverse and rapidly changing world. More at education.indiana.edu. Smithville Fiber, the Gigacity Company, a philanthropic community partner since 1922, and proud supporter of numerous community organizations. More information at smithville.com. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our communities. And these Indiana public television stations, thank you. Do you cool cats have the perfect idea for the Friday Zone? Want to share a hobby, tell us about an event, or let us know what's happening in your town? Then contact us on our website at fridayzone.org or send an email to zone at indiana.edu. Right meow!